Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad to have all of you here. Today's altar flowers. If they have it up here or not. We do. I'll read it anyway. Or in memory of our military service persons throughout the generations from our families and yours. Especially we honor our son-in-law, CW5, Steve A. Donahue, Jr., whose retirement celebration we just shared with family and friends. Steve served in the Army Aviation for 31.5 years, flying the Apache helicopter with deployments too numerous to list. And we thank him. This is from Carol Canavan and Milt Webster. At Community Christian Church, all of God's children are welcome. Young or old, members of this church or no church, those who believe and those who are searching, all races, cultures, orientations, and expressions are loved by God. So we say, come as you are, as we celebrate God's love, peace, and justice together. The prelude this morning is a salute to the military followed by America the Beautiful by the handbell choir. And as they play your particular military theme, Army, Marines, Air Force, Navy, we invite you, those of you who served, to stand up and be recognized and stay up for the rest of the service. No, I'm just kidding. No, just stand when you hear your Army, Marines, we're so proud of you and glad that you have served for us.
Thank you, Bill Quare, and thank you, veterans. At this point, we'd like you to stand, if you would, for hymn number 720. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. The bell choir has another number. Thank you. Sorry.
missed that. Now you're invited to stand for hymn number 720, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. <laughs> seated. Our call to worship this morning is from the Chalice Hymnal, number 723, A Prayer for the Nation. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. 
and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Let's invite the children down front for the children's moment. Yesterday was a very special day in America. Every November 11th, we honor all the men and women who served in our military. Those men and women are called veterans. It is actually called Veterans Day. Do you know any veterans? I grandpa who served in the Navy during the Vietnam War. Guess what? You all know one. Do you know who I'm talking about? She's downstairs, but Miss Emily served in the Marine Corps. How about that? So you guys all know somebody for sure. Can you guys, anybody, raise your hand or stand up if you are able, served in the military? Anybody? Thank you for your service. Can we say thank you? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. So today, we are going to talk about personal sacrifice, about laying down your life for others. That sounds like losing your life so that others can have theirs, doesn't it? The people that have been or are in the military, also people like police and firemen, firefighters, they put their lives on they put their lives on the line for all of us every day. Firefighters don't always know that they're going to make it out of that fire alive. But what they do know is that the people stuck in the building are very important. So they go into very scary, very dangerous situations to help others. Jesus is an amazing example of someone who sacrificed himself for us. Jesus Christ died for you and for me. Jesus died so that we might live. The greatest form of love is to put someone else's needs ahead of your own. So we can still follow the example of those that have done so by living for others, right? Laying down your life for your friends doesn't mean that you have to die for them. It can mean living for them. When Jesus says friends in the Bible, I think it's the same thing as saying neighbors, right? We have amazing examples laid down for us by so many men and women that have sacrificed for us. And we have the ultimate example of self-sacrifice from Jesus Christ. These are the people that we should imitate. We can follow their examples and live our lives for others. My challenge for you all today is that you would put the needs of somebody else before your own. We are then showing the most ultimate and amazing love that there is. Can we pray? We pray for those who have served. We pray for those who have served. Our nation and have laid down their lives. Our nation and have laid down their lives. To protect and defend our freedom. To protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who serve us now. We pray for those who serve us now. Especially those in harm's way especially those in harm's way. Shield them from danger. Shield them from danger. And bring them home. And bring them home. May the peace you left us. May the peace you left us. 
for the peace you gave us, the peace you gave us. Be the peace that sustains us. Be the peace that sustains us. For the peace that saved us. The peace that saved us. Amen. Amen. While John prepares to pray for us, I just want to mention a few requests that we want to hold in our hearts this week. Harry Bewley fell and had hip surgery and is still in the hospital. We want to pray for him. We also want to keep praying for Dr. Malamacy, who is in the hospital waiting for a heart transplant. And we want to continue to pray for Jen Kriska's father, who is having ongoing health issues. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you this morning with joyful hearts as we praise those among us who have given so much to our country, to our church, to our families. And we do thank them. We thank all of those who have fought for justice fought for the rights of others, and fought for our world. We are reminded this morning of the words of Lloyd Stone in 1934 as he wrote, Dear God, this is our song, a song of all nations and a God of all nations a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is our home, the country where our heart is. These are our hopes, our dreams, our holy shrine. Our skies are bluer than the ocean. The sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too and clover and skies are everywhere as blue as ours. This is our prayer this morning, O ruler of all nations. Let thy reign come on earth, thy will be done. In peace may all earth's people draw together, and hearts united learn to live as one. These things we ask this morning be with us throughout the day as we honor those who have served this great country. We ask these things in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, choir and bell choir for all that beautiful music. Today's scripture is from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, which can be found on your pew Bibles in the New Testament on page 28 if you'd like to follow along. The parable of the ten bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Twin, ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be not enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealer and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you, you know neither the day nor the hour. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was a birthday in my household this week. And whenever there's a birthday, particularly of the person we celebrated this week, we like to engage in a little bit of roasting. Anyone else roast someone in your family on their birthday? Well, my husband's birthday was on Monday, and we have been teasing him all week as part of the fun. Halfway to 90, we kept saying. Gosh, we should start looking into retirement homes, right? Can't light candles on that cake, it'd burn the whole house down. Halfway to 90, my kids have been saying every single day, oh gosh, you're so old, Daddy. (laughs) He's only four years older than me, but I pretend like he's 40 years older than me. He'll say, oh, when you were in high school, did you listen to this band? And I'll say, oh, I wasn't even born yet. We like to tell stories about him, and in honor of his birthday this week, I'm going to tell you one that really captures who Andrew Taylor Peck is. When we were in finishing grad school, living in Boston, we were having a yard sale. We were preparing to move to Memphis for a ministry position, and so it was time to sell all of our belongings. Some of you might have heard this story. And We had priced everything, and we had folding tables ready, and the yard sale was going to be from 8 a.m. until noon on a Sunday. We were skipping church. I don't recommend it. Yard sales are better on Saturdays. But we did this, and we had everything ready, and we just needed to put signs out in the neighborhood to tell people that the yard sale was coming. That was Andrew's job. We had the signs ready. I sent him out on his bicycle with tape and yard signs. And he started putting them on the lampposts and the subway and all the different places he could find. He left at 7 a.m. knowing that he'd need some time to put them around. Then he got an idea. You know, these would be better in neon. I wonder if I could go to that Kinko's 24 hours, copy them in neon, and put them even more places. And so he went to Kinko's and made neon copies at 7.42 a.m., He made a hundred. Pink and green and yellow and orange. 
And then he started putting them around. He got real excited about this. He thought about the bulletin board in the grocery store. He thought about the bulletin board at one subway stop down. You know, people might want to come for a great, great bargain. So he's out putting these signs. And at 9.30 a.m., he thinks, I only have 50 more. So he keeps going, and he's putting signs everywhere. He doesn't get home until 12.30 p.m., when everything's sold and everything else is on the curb saying free. And I said, what were you thinking? You missed it. I had to do all the sales and all the bargaining and all the change making and all of the talking to all these people. You totally missed it. He said, oh, I just, I wanted to make sure everybody came. I was putting signs everywhere. And this is what ADD looks like, guys. But the thing is, all of us have a little bit of that, don't we? That, that idea that we just have to get things right, prepare enough and plan enough, and once we do, then we'll finally arrive at whatever the goal is, right? Sometimes that happens even at church. We think, you know what, I'm going to get more involved once work settles down. I'm going to get more involved once it's not daylight savings, because you know what, it's just too dark in the mornings. I'm going to get more involved once I understand a little bit more about the curriculum and the children's program, or once they're doing the kinds of things I like in the youth group, or once, you know, once the new year comes, I'll make a new year's resolution, get more involved. That happens in our faith lives too. You know what, I'll be more generous and more loving and more forgiving once I spend a little time processing this. I'll be a little bit more involved and serving the Lord once my schedule frees up. I can't sign up now, but in the future I will. We think about this in terms of how we serve and how we're involved and where we put our hearts and our time, but of course, as the poet Annie Dillard says, the way we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. Because we think that we can get it all set, and once we've done all the prep work, then our life will begin, or our commitments will begin, or the things that we care about we can really invest in. It might not be putting up yard sale signs for you, but I bet that there's something that you think about in this way. Once this settles down or I get this sorted out or this works out, I'll finally do that thing. In our scripture today, Jesus was aware of this human tendency and he was talking to his disciples about it. He was teaching them through a parable. We're still in the Gospel of Matthew where we have been for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we're still in the period of time where we've been for the last several Sundays. It's Holy Week. This is the time after Jesus has come into Jerusalem. It's the very end of his life, the last few days of his life. He's come in riding on a donkey on Palm Sunday and the cloaks and the palm branches have been thrown down. And then he's just days away from the cross. And we know that as we've been studying this, his teachings have become so intense and so focused and almost accusatory and bold and brave because he knows he's only got a few days left to say everything that needs to be said, everything that needs to be remembered, everything that needs to be taught. And so some people consider the scripture that we're hearing today from Matthew 25 as almost the second Sermon on the Mount because he's on the Mount of Olives and he's talking to his disciples. And he's teaching him those things that he wants them to remember, those last things. It's the bookend from the Sermon on the Mount to the Sermon on the Mount of Olives where he's saying the last things for his followers to remember. And in the parable today, he's talking about this situation, about when the bridegroom comes. It's a metaphor or an allegory for Jesus coming again. And there's 10 bridesmaids, and they have lamps, but they don't know when Jesus, when the bridegroom is coming. And some of them are prepared, and some of them are not. Some of them brought extra oil for their lamps, and some didn't. And then an announcement happens that the bridegroom is here. It's happened. Everything they've been waiting for. They wake up, and the bridegroom is here. And at that very moment, five of them leave to go get more oil, to go put up more yard sale signs, to go defer a goal one more time. They leave right in that moment. And then when they come back and they're late, Jesus says, the bridegroom says, no, I'm sorry, the door is shut. He's teaching this to his disciples because he wants them to remember something important. A lot of people think that this scripture is about the second coming of Christ that happens one time. 
But actually, Jesus is talking about what's going to happen after his death and resurrection, about the many times that we will encounter Christ in new ways, and the light that we're called to carry every day as faithful followers. Jesus isn't talking about the final second coming rapture. He's talking about how to live in his absence, to invite Jesus in through gestures of kindness and generosity and forgiveness and mercy and serving your community and loving your neighbors as yourselves again and again and again. He's talking about how it's a marathon, not a sprint, how to be prepared with the gifts that God has given us at all times. That's what the light means in this story. Whenever the children sing, and I know they're preparing to do this over Advent, they have that song. It's one of the first ones that they learn in church. You remember it? It's about light, right? I'm sure you have had children or grandchildren or children of this church sing this song to you. It's one of the first ones they learn in church or in preschool, right? It goes, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Kids always sing this song. It's the first they learn. And what they're talking about is how we are called to shine God's light, to keep those lamps bright, the gifts that God gives us, keep them alive and well. And this doesn't mean make one grand gesture of faith in your life, skip church for years and show up and make a huge donation in your will, or come on Christmas Eve and sing and pray and be a scripture reader. It means live a faithful life with that light shining every single day. For the way is the touchable Christ comes in the face of the, na- the neighbor, the stranger, the one you haven't met yet, the one who needs your mercy, the one who needs service, the one who needs your forgiveness. Keep that light burning in every encounter of the touchable Christ. For the coming that happens each and every day when you meet people who are made in God's image and need something from you. What Jesus is teaching his disciples on the Mount of Olives days before he dies is to remember to be prepared at all times to shine God's light, to keep it lit among our community and friends and those we serve, no matter what. Not big grand gestures of faith one time, but instead make a practice of shining God's light. Be prepared and invested each day So at Community Christian Church, as we're ending our stewardship campaign, as we're looking ahead to the next year, when we're thinking about who we are as a church, we remember that our goal is to remember these teachings of Christ, to live in the moments every single day that call us to shine God's light, to be true to our name, to love one another and our community and serve one another each and every day. Keep those little lights of ours bright and ready for the touchable Christ. Amen. What a wonderful message, no? Let your light shine. The traditional understanding in the church is that we are stewards of gifts and resources which belong to God. Jesus refers to each of us being asked at some point to account for the way we use the resources entrusted to us. Stewardship is managing the resources which belong to God so that God will be pleased when we account for what we have done. Let us use what God has entrusted to us in appropriate ways. Deacons. Let us pray. Gracious God, Remind us daily that nothing we have is ours, but rather a gift from you. Because we so love you, we give. In Jesus' name, amen.
Before we begin communion, you should have something like this in front of you. If you don't, we have uh, more in the back and a deacon or usher could help you get one. I'm gonna give you a quick lesson about how we open these so that you're ready. There's a triangle on the edge of the top that if you bend it back and forth, you can get the wafer out of the um, cellophane and then pull it all the way back for the juice. We come to this table every week because this is oil for our lamps so that our lights can shine. It's freely given. It's available for all. It's an open invitation. It's at this table that we remember where God invests in us, where God gives us grace and mercy and love so that we can share it with the world. This is an open table and you are welcome to partake. This is a table open to all, whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you've been baptized or not, whether you're a member of this church or no church, you're welcome at this table because it's God's table for all. Elders, let us pray. Let us pray. This is the day that the Lord hath made let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is the table that he has prepared for us. It is a table of light. It is a table of hope. It is a table of eternity. Lord, we ask your blessings on this bread, which represents the broken body of our Savior, who is the light of all. Amen. Eternal God, we are grateful for these common elements and the strength that enters our lives when we receive them as communion. Bless the cup we drink in memory of Jesus. May your presence remind us that with this privilege comes responsibility. Although we commit ourselves to more worthy service, we need your guidance for the living of each and every day. Amen. We remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room. He took a loaf of bread and blessed it and then broke it for all things that are broken. And Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks for it and blessed it, and then gave it to his disciples and said, drink deeply from this cup, all of you. In it is a new covenant in my blood for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time that we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim that Christ lives among us until God comes again. We join me praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. We use debts and debtors. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You're invited to stand and join us in the singing of our next hymn, number 721, My Country, Tis of Thee. <laughs>
the benediction. Elders, we meet after this in the chapel. Also, for all of you, next week we are having a Thanksgiving meal for the church. Lots of volunteers and cooks are coming together to make sure that we can celebrate as a family of faith for Thanksgiving. We need to know if you're coming by the 16th. You can bring family or friends, but we want to know you're coming. So please RSVP. It's also our congregational meeting where we are going to have a drawing for all those who pledged. Thank you to those who pledged. If you haven't, there's still time, but we want it by Thursday so you can be in the drawing. Now receive this blessing. May the God who created you in the image of goodness, the Holy Spirit who breathed into you the breath of life, and Christ who went ahead of us all, send you into this day with peace so that your light can shine. Amen.